Hi everyone, today we have a special guest, Mrs. B uh, Miss Betty Holler, and she is representing the Franciscan seculars in the Diocese of Phoenix. As you know, we are focusing our real day on the Beatitudes this year, so it is only fitting that we serve in any way we can. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Betty is here to tell us a little bit more about the Franciscan seculars, as, we, as well as a project that we are really excited to be helping out with. Hi everyone. As he said, my name is Betty, and I have found that the seculars is kind of a word that people just aren't familiar with. You know, um, the Franciscan way has impressed me, um, partially through watching our friars, but just everything I've learned about St. Francis. But what really happened is when St. Francis formed the friars, which of course is the first order, which, same thing as a priest, he then formed St. Clair with the sisters, so they became the second order. But then we have all these lay people who also want to help with all this. Because as you know, all of us also love to serve the poor and take care of each other. So he said, this group will have a third order. So we are an official order of the Franciscans, and we're called the seculars. Now, we don't live like the sisters or the priests. Go out in the community. I'm you know, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I have a dog, I have kids and grandkids. And so what we do is we are just among the people and it offers us so many possibilities in speaking with people about St. Francis, about St. Clair, but mostly about the way of life that they followed. So in the introduction, I talked a little bit about a project that we would be able to help out with. Can you give us some details surrounding the project? I would be really happy to do that. As seculars in Phoenix this, this coming year, we are honored to be the region that will be hosting what's called the 20th Quinquennial. And what we'll have is 800 to 1,000 seculars coming in from all across the world. We have people from Italy that fly in for these. We have people from everywhere. And normally, the only thing really they hear is about adult things, to be honest with you. But we know that people love kids and they love them being a part of things. So when they said that they'd like to include something about children, my hand went up right away. I love working with you guys and I want to share what I have in mind for you. So what I want is we're going to form placemats with you doing the artwork. Let me give you an example. So on the one side, you're going to see what we have is our secular prayer for this quinquennial. And of course, I love the world with all the kids from everywhere. Here we have, of course, the prayer of St. Francis. On the other side, this is where you star, star, it says celebrate with love, peace, and fun. This is what will be you. And I'll show you several examples, but your pictures will be here. What will happen is you will have um, put your first name and your age on the back of the sheet. So I will be typing up a thing that gives us the name of your school, your name, and your age. And I'll be t I will tell you when I presented this to our people, they are so excited and feel like the people at the dinner are gonna feel honored to have artwork from, from the kids around the community. So I wanna show you a couple of examples. <clears throat> of course, St. Francis. There'll be several you can choose from and St. Clair, and here is a San Damiano Chapel, which is where we, we believe St. Francis had God talk to him for the first time. He was in front of the San Damiano Cross, which is such a beautiful cross with all the people around it. And here's one where he's got the dove. And you go into all of these, some of them he's got animals, some of them um, are like that, and we also, there's both of them. But we also go into St. Clair. And you're going to have some choices of which one you want to contribute. And like I said, I am just honored you guys are willing to participate and especially invite us in when it's about the Beatitudes. St. Francis is like the true star of the Beatitudes. You know, and he wasn't from the beginning. But when we see what he represents, and he is known as a saint that is the most like Jesus. So we're very proud of him, and we're very proud that we can follow Jesus in this way. And I hope you love it too.
Knowing that we are focusing on the Beatitudes, we understand this, that this project involves two saints, St. Francis of Assisi and St. Clare of Assisi. Can you help us better understand how the lives of these saints relate to the Beatitudes? I would be happy to do that. When I look through the Beatitudes, and I brought actually the, the eight that are in St. Matthew's Gospel, which are the, what I feel are the basis of the whole, of the whole set, um, I was looking at them and Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. We, do, we have to understand that St. Francis came from wealth. His dad was a nobleman. And somehow, when Jesus talked to him, he learned and felt the right way. So the poor in spirit, does it means several things. It means poor, um, material-wise, but it also means spirit. And we can join in with him there, um, poor in spirit. We've got a spirit that lets us gain the trust of the poor, the trust of those who are mistreated. We all can follow Beatitudes in that way. And St. Clair, by following St. Francis, served the very same way. And I looked at, you know, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Can you imagine when you'd go to your father and you've been this rich son for all these years and you go to him and you say, I don't want this stuff anymore. Stuff means nothing to me. So the father, of course, took him to the bishop who was supposed to convince Francis that he should change his ways. The bishop didn't. And St. Francis gave all of his possessions back. And the bishop welcomed him with an old robe-like clothes. He was persecuted by his relatives, by his family, by all of his rich friends who, who didn't understand what he was doing. But not once did Francis fall back on feeling like he was doing wrong. We have to be righteous in that very same way. Sometimes when we think righteous, we think, you know, I think we used to tend to think that that means they're kind of thinking they're above everybody. That's not it at all. When you're righteous, you're willing to stick to your beliefs and follow God in the true way. And that's what St. Francis and St. Clair did for us. This has been some great information and the project sounds really meaningful. Is there anything else you would like to share with us? I think the biggest thing I wanna say is thank you, every one of you. This is gonna be so exciting that we're using a placemat that has been made by you. We aren't just buying a placemat. And actually, I just saw some girls walk through with a sign about a sock drive. Now, is that Franciscan? Yes. Every time you participate in that kind of thing, you're following St. Francis's footprints. God bless you and keep it up. Thank you so much for joining us today here at St. John, the 23rd Catholic School. So now all you students out there, it's time to work on our project. Have fun and happy real day.